My name is Gene Eby. I'm one of the USACS physicians and here to talk to you about uh, difficult airway and specifically about cricothyroidotomy. The, uh, start out with uh, as far as disclaimers go, I have uh, absolutely no interest in anything that is presented today. We do have some equipment that's presented today and it is just uh, the equipment that has bubbled up as uh, uh, easy to use and, and reasonable to, uh, reasonably priced equipment to purchase, uh, but I have no interest in, in any of these items. Um, so in, in talking about uh, cricothyroidotomy, uh, one of the, the key elements in uh, successful cricothyroidotomy is, is ensuring that you have a decent pathway to get there and to know when you're going to have to go down the pathway of surgical cricothyroidotomy in front of neck access and, and how you're going to do that successfully in a timely fashion to avoid an anoxic injury with your patient. I use two tools to help me, uh, guide me to the, the direction of, of, um, of surgical cricothyroidotomy and, and making sure that I, I make a timely approach to this. Uh, one of those tools was uh, developed by a gentleman by the name of Steve Crimes. He's an Australian. Uh, I think it's a, a very successful tool. It's called the Airway Vortex. Um, the Airvo Airway Vortex is um, uh, a tool that uh, shows you um, how you can approach different modalities of difficult airway management in a timely fashion and move on successfully um, and successfully uh, along the pathway of uh, going down the, the difficult airway algorithm. The airway vortex starts out with a green zone on the very top of the airway vortex and that's where you're successfully ventilating and oxygenating the patient. And as you start to uh, fail to adequately oxygenate or ventilate that patient, you enter the vortex and you start to go down and need to uh, ad uh, address the airway with different techniques. So it may be back valve mask, it may be endotracheal intubation, it may be an SGA that you uh, are headed down the path of. Um, and on each successive tool that you are going to pick up and start utilizing, uh, the Vortex is recommending that you don't take any more than three attempts at any one of those tools and that you move on successfully in, in changing up what you're doing and how you're doing uh, your technique with each one of these tools. I strongly encourage you to go to the website here and uh, take a look at the, the Vortex by Steve Grimes. It's, a, it's an excellent tool. The other tool that I think is phenomenal in, in being able to help you in decision making for surgical cricothyroidotomy is called Cricon. Cricon was developed by uh, Scott Weingart and the uh, EM Crit team. Um, and it basically goes through three different steps in your approach to your management of difficult airway and your thought process on sur surgical cricothyroidotomy. The first process is the green stage of Cricon, and this should be approached with every single tube that you do. So anytime you approach an intratracheal intubation, you should discuss the idea of having to go down a surgical pathway. You should know where your equipment is located, and mentally you should picture exactly where that location is, so that when you have to direct somebody in the midst of you doing a procedure, you'll be able to direct them exactly where that kit is. Um, and you should palpate the cricothyroid membrane as part of your airway evaluation on every patient you do. Um, the reality is that we don't palpate enough cricothyroid membranes. So when time comes and we have to cut a cricothyroid membrane, we really haven't felt that many membranes to be able to be an expert at identifying exactly where that membrane is. So I would suggest to you that approaching this on a, a frequent basis is, is a necessity. And an easy way to do that is anytime you feel the anterior posterior cervical lymphadenopathy in any patient and you're evaluating for cerv cervical lymphadenopathy, take a second and feel the, the thyroid cartilage, feel the cricothyroid membrane, get used to the, the comfort level of being able to be able to pick that up immediately when you want to go to it. Because when you want to go to it in a surgical cricothyroidotomy, you do not want to be fishing around figuring out for your first time where that, that, that cricothyroid membrane is. So that's Cricon Green. Cricon Yellow talks about um, uh, a situation where you have identified a difficult airway. Either you've started down the pathway and you're having successful challenges, successive challenges in uh, performing your difficult airway, 
or you have, you have uh, identified preemptively that this patient is in fact a difficult airway case. In that case, you want to pull your, your surgical cry kit out and put it on a table next to you. You don't necessarily need to open it up, but you should have it at the ready at the bedside. Um, this, the uh, uh, other part of the yellow cricon is that you want to not just identify the cricothyroid membrane, but take a marker and put a mark across the cricothyroid membrane to, to have that identified. You do a couple things with this. It's not just the, uh, the art of identifying the cricothyroid membrane. It's also the communi communication that you have with the team that is saying to the team, this is a plan. This is an orchestrated plan that we're going to go down. This is not failure. This is a successful plan that we are, we're going to orchestrate down. And they'll help you to augment that plan if you're communicating it adequately. And all you need to do to communicate that adequately is put a small mark on the neck and show the team, yes, this is something that we're thinking about. And finally, Crycon Red means that we cannot oxygenate, we cannot ventilate. It is time to consider front of neck, neck access. So obviously we'd have our kit out at the bedside, ready to go, opened up, and preferably we'd have a partner that, is, that has already scrubbed the neck and has a scalpel in hand ready to go. Um, and as you attempt your third attempt at your endotracheal intubation without success, they'll be ready to cut. So that would be Crycon Red. I encourage you to visit the MCRIT website and uh, uh, Scott Wangard's website for, for more information about Crycon, and it's an excellent tool. Um, the other piece of this is predicting your difficult airway, and there's many tools to do this. The Heaven tool, as well as the Lemon Law, are well known to all of us. We've had this presented to us many times, and these are tools that are excellent for identifying when you're going to get into trouble with difficult airway and trying to predict them, realizing that about 90% of the time that we do this, it's difficult to anticipate when we're going to run into problems with difficult airways. So on surgical cricothyroidotomy, we're, we're um, talking about front of neck access, and we've gone down the path we have identified front of neck access. Um, there are a couple approaches that you can take on surgical, on, on cricothyroidotomy, uh, specifically needle and surgical. Um, there are quite a few studies that have been out. The NEAR study is one that uh, talked about 1% uh, of the 4,000 ED uh, intubations required cricothyroidotomy. Had a, the cricothyroidotomies had up to a 20% complication rate. Mostly were minor complications, um, and it does, uh, did eliminate pediatrics, um, and their age cutoff for the peds were anybody less than 8 years of age. So we need to consider a needle cricothyroidotomy in less than eight years of age. So the NEAR study talked about 1% of the 4,000 ED uh, intubations re that required cricothyroidotomy. So we don't see that we go down the pathway of cricothyroidotomy that often with only 1% of the, the uh, uh, emergency department intubations. But there is a high complication rate with over 20% complication rate, mostly minor complications. We want to avoid this in the, the pediatric population, surgical cricothyroidotomy, and we want to move towards needle cricothyroidotomy with, with uh, children less than eight years of age. Uh, the indications and contraindications for cricothyroidotomy. Uh, so the indications for cricothyroidotomy are cannot intubate and cannot ventilate. The contraindications of cricothyroidotomy really are uh, no absolute contraindications. Uh, you're certainly going to have challenges with a transected trachea. That's not going to be a true cricothyroidotomy. You're going to be going to a tracheotomy and, and cannulating the transected trachea. Um, so that may be one of the uh, contraindications. Uh, and then known damage to the cricothyroid membrane. Uh, however, uh, at this point, if we need an airway, we need an airway. and, and uh, Proceeding on with the surgical airway is, is really the next step. Uh, so there are really no absolute contraindications. Uh, again, I have no um, interest in any of the, the products, but uh, one of the products that we've we found that we really like a lot is this H and H emergency cricothyroidotomy kit. Um, this comes with a uh, shortened bougie, a 60 cuffed endotracheal tube that has a twill tied uh, ad adapter to it. Um, a curved hemostat as well as a, a hook and a scalpel. Uh, twill is, it also comes with twill. The, um, 
a crack kit is just simple. It packs up easily. Uh, it's easily identifiable in the, um, in the drawer. You're able to pull it out and know exactly what you're, at, who you're going after and pick it out of a, a, a drawer of, uh, uh, pretty easily. We see uh, um, some institutions that say they can just put a kit together and, and sterilize the kit and put it in the drawer. But what I find with a lot of those kits is you end up with the same appearing uh, sterilized blue um, uh, transparent packaging and you, uh, the drawer has four or five of those in there and you're not sure what is what and you end up going through it and it just makes it more complicated. So I think having a discrete package that really will identify your cricothyroidotomy kit is, is exceedingly important. Um, the, uh, and ha keeping it as simple and bare bones as possible is obviously a major advantage with this kit. Um, so I am not a big fan of the hook. Um, I don't think that it has a lot of utility with this. I think there, there may be situations that you need a hook. Um, however, in the vast majority of the surgical cricothyroidotomies you're going to perform, um, I think the hook is, is, is going to take up more time uh, than is necessary. It's really an unnecessary tool for the most part. Um, it happens to be the number one tool for uh, injury in the operating suite. Uh, anymore, they will not pass this tool in the operating suite without putting it in an emesis basin uh, due to the injuries that occur. So you need to uh, use some extreme caution if you are using the tool. And, and, uh, uh, and again, I, I don't see a lot of utility for it in this procedure. Uh, curved hemostat, I think, is very helpful if you need to dilate up the opening. However, um, I hope with the technique that we're going to show you, you'll have success at, at, at opening this with the scalpel alone. Um, so the technique we're going to talk about today is called the scalpel finger bougie technique. Uh, again, this is one of the EM crit uh, uh, and Scott Weingart um, techniques, um, and it's just excellent, simple, and reduces the equipment down to the very minimum that you need. So the first thing you need to do on, in uh, approaching your patient, and this is one of the few times that I really stay site specific on approaching my patient. Um, I like to be on the right hand side of the patient because I'm a right hand, uh, right -hand dominant. Um, and that way I can take my non-dominant hand and place my thenar eminence on the chin of the patient, stabilize the trachea with my thumb and my middle finger leaving my index finger to probe, to palpate for the V-notch of the tracheal cartilage and coming down into the cricothyroid membrane. Um, once that's identified, um, you can uh, lift your finger out of the way, proceed on with your vertical cut. Your vertical cut, one cut down should be about a centimeter and a half, two centimeters, spread the, thin, the skin apart so that you can uh, try to identify the cricothyroid membrane easier. You can take a 4x4, four four, scrub the, the membrane to try to expose the membrane to a greater extent. In reality, you're going to have uh, a fair degree of blood at this point, and identifying that is going to be challenging. Uh, the second cut that we make is going to be your horizontal cut. We do a plunge cut, and on the plunge cut, we do a 90-degree plunge cut, cut straight down. And when you're cutting, you're cutting to air until you hear that gasp of air. Uh, when you cut down, if you cut down all the way to the base of the, the uh, cricothyroid membrane, it has a wider base at the posterior aspect that will stop your scalpel. You bring your scalpel towards you, you turn your scalpel 180 degrees, turn it away from you, and you place your finger into the cricothyroid membrane. You feel the cricothyroid rings and make sure that you're completely in the cricothyroid membrane. Then you pass your bougie along the pad of your finger into the trachea. Once the bougie is in the trachea, you can remove your finger, continue to, continue to stabilize your trachea, and insert your your tube, your 6-0 cuffed into tracheal tube. At this point, you can control your bleeding, um, inflate your cuff, uh, verify your position with entitled CO2, preferably waveform entitled CO2, and um, ventilate your patient. 
So um, in conclusion, it is important to recognize your difficult airway. Recognize how much time you have to react, the backup that you have available, what your backup procedure will be and how you're going to approach that backup procedure, what triggers you're going to use to move you in the direction of a surgical airway. Know both the old and new methods. Um, you need to know all of these methods, but you need to master one. Um, choose the backups based on your skill. Uh, and it is a wise idea for, ha for you to have an emergency airway checklist available in the emergency department so that your team can know the steps and the, the medications that you're going to need as you move along. I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you very much. I hope you've learned um, a, a decent approach on this airway um, surgical crike approach.